Hi everybody. So what we're doing in today's class is looking at portraits and how people edit portrait pictures or pictures of people to give that kind of published look about them. And there's a couple of steps that are quite straightforward that a lot of pictures will go through to give them that kind of uh, published look and it's a little bit more polished. And I suppose this lesson is as much a life lesson as it is a, a kind of photo editing lesson that a lot of the pictures we see in the media and social media and on covers of magazines and in newspapers, they're not real. They've been heavily edited and we're going to do what will take us a couple of minutes when we get used to doing it. And pretty much all pictures will go through this process. And when you do it a few times, you can learn to see where these pictures have been edited and you'll see them all over the place. Celebrities and on newspapers and magazines everywhere. It's so common. Uh, if we have a model like this, or a subject or a portrait, what we want to do is apply five or six steps. So we'll end up with a much more soft kind of edited look or an edited image that looks something like this, that looks more professional or more kind of richer and flawless for all the world, even though there's no such thing as a flawless looking person. And this is what we see all the time in the media all around us are all these people that look perfect. When in actual fact, they don't look like that at all. So if we have our picture here, the first thing that we would do is we would probably remove these freckles or any kind of color that's different from the rest of the skin tone, whatever it is. So how we would do that would be to use the heal tool. So you might have heal hidden here under clone or perspective. So I select heal. If your options for it don't come up, double click on it. So I've set mine to size 10 because 10 is roughly the same size as the freckle here that I'm healing. So I'm zooming in and out by keeping my finger on control and ro rolling the mouse wheel. It's command on a Mac. So select heal. Now we target a skin color. So we want to use a skin color close to the freckle that we're healing. So finger on control and click. So now GIMP is using that color there to act as a healing color for the rest. So now we just click over wherever there's any of these kind of imperfections or discolorations. So you might have to click it a few times just so you can kind of um, blend it in properly. So I'm just going to do the major areas that need to be evened out. Um, the more time you spend on this, the more even it will become and the more careful you can be. I'm just doing it very quickly here. It's actually a pretty good result, even though I'm doing it very quickly. One area you would also heal is here under the eye. So this removing this basically makes people look a little bit younger and also here see where there's some crow's feet that we all have when we smile or frown so you could heal those um you just you don't want it to be too unnatural and for it to be very obvious that some healing has gone on so in here as well we want to kind of smudge out this color so the dark section is gone and that shadow is gone so you just don't want to have any lines there so if we zoom out now we can see that the dark colors removed actually make the person look a little bit younger. So we'll kind of, we'll add another color to this later on through an airbrush to uh, even it out, but it looks pretty good there as it is. So now the next tool is, or the next uh, tip is how we soften a picture and to make it look a very rich color and to kind of make it more vibrant. So what we can do is we can duplicate our layers. That's the first thing. So down here to duplicate, and click on it and then that will give us two layers over here and here's a little trick if we pick one of the layers and we go up to filters and blur and we pick a gaussian blur i'm going to set that to somewhere between 9 and 10 so 9.5 that's fine so it looks like we've ruined our picture but what our next step will do is it will combine the pictures or the layers underneath one of these settings so we go to mode currently it's set to normal and in there we pick soft light. So we can see now, look at how the picture has become quite rich looking and it's very, very soft and like there's a lovely light on it and the shadows have been softened, but the colors look richer. So that will allow us to uh, kind of really bump up the color of a picture. The next thing to do would be to airbrush it. So if you can't find airbrush in the latest version of GIMP, it's in here under, for me originally, it was under the brush like that. So I went in here and a airbrush. You might have to right click on it. And I think pushing A on the keyboard will get it for you as well. So I want to turn up the size of the airbrush. 
So I want to be able to cover a large section at a time. So like somewhere around 60 for me here is good. So I can do, it actually might be too big. I'm just going to turn it down to maybe mid fifties. And I've turned the rate up extremely high because we're working with two layers that kind of reduces the impact of how much paint is applied. If we were only working on one layer, it would come out like a paintbrush. But when we're working with two layers that are kind of uh, combined under a soft light, the result is slightly different. So you might need to turn it up full. You can try it and see how it works and then turn it down if you need to. But we can see here, we just achieve a subtle effect, which is what we want, where all the colors and skin tones are quite similar. This is how we do it. So I'm just going to zoom in. And even the way I have it set up, it mightn't be that immediately obvious. Oh, that's way too high. So look, I've made a mistake. It's set to white. What I should have set it to was the skin tone of the person. So I go in here and I select a color dropper and I pick out the model skin tone. So see the way my foreground color has changed? Might even go slightly lighter. And now I'll use airbrush. So it's taking the skin color and applying it over wherever we click. So I keep my finger on the mouse button. And as I'm going over here, you mightn't be so sure it's even doing anything, but that's almost a good sign when it comes to airbrushing that if we airbrush too much, like you see all the time on glossy magazine color covers, um, people begin to start to look like drift towards kind of animations or cartoon characters. So you really want to do it where there's any contrast in colors up here on the top around where the eyebrow is, uh, over the nose where there's that darker color and the other cheek over here. We don't want to airbrush the mouth area because that's a different color. And I just keep my finger on it. I do a little bit more. And now you might think I haven't done anything, but if I hit undo, so control and Z here, you can see the difference, look. So we've lost all those shadows and where there was kind of light and dark spots to look a much more even skin tone. So if there were sections there, I can see just over the nose needs a little bit more. So this is still a little bit darker. So I'll airbrush in here and that softens that whole area to bring it into line with the rest of the face. So it looks more even. And again, the whole idea of this is that it's supposed to kind of reverse the aging look. So the crow's feet are gone, the dark colors are gone. And this is probably the most common and most controversial thing. We you should probably go down onto the neck area here as well, just to make sure that all the colors are similar. So if I just undo it again, can you see the difference now? Redo, and it's a very even finish. So the next thing that we would have a think about doing would be to adjust some of the colors in the picture. So there's a couple of things we could do. Um, we could lighten the eyes. So in here where the whites of the eyes are, we could use the color select tool to highlight it. So look, my threshold is obviously too high there. It's selecting way too much. So I'm just going to turn down my threshold. To see, it's still uh, actually what I might do before I do that, I'm going to merge the layers. So I go up to image and flatten image just to remove the second layer to combine them into one. So now there we go. So we want to select enough of the eye that we can brighten, but also not too much that it really looks like we're brightening way too much. So I think I should be about right there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to drop in white. So I go to my foreground color, select white. But the trick with it is if we drop it in at full opacity, it would be far too strong. So look, that can never work. So we turn down the opacity, which is kind of like the amount of paint that we use. I think I had it at about six there and I'll drop it in. So that might actually be too subtle. So I can turn it up slightly. We don't want to go too far with it because I can get out of sync very quickly uh, in there. So that's, that's probably enough because we want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be obvious that we've edited this. And the same in here and we drop in white. Now, one thing you could also try is if you've got that selected, we could go up here to colors and we could adjust the brightness. So we could kind of fake some light being shone on the eye. So you just have to be careful with this that it doesn't look out of kilter with the rest of the eye or the other eye. So if I zoom out here, so we've got, it's fairly right. We might just need to correct this section in here. So we could do that a couple of ways. We could smudge it or we could undo the work that we've done and select a higher threshold. <clears throat> The next thing to do is we could probably do something similar with the person's teeth. So we could select the teeth here. I'll just do it very quickly. And we don't want to select the lips because it's a different color. And we could just apply some 
brightness to it. So it kind of whitens the teeth basically. But we don't want to go too far because it will be too big a difference with the bottom teeth and it'll almost cause an overbite if we do it incorrectly. So we'll do the same on the bottom teeth. So I'm using the lasso tool to go around and then back to where I started. And the same thing again, we'll go up to colors and brightness and turn it up a little bit. Just be careful it's not too far. Okay, if we zoom out, okay, so that looks a little bit better. The next thing we could do is adjust the color of the eyes. So this would happen an awful lot as well. So I'll use the ellipse tool in my select and I'm going to select the iris. And what I'm going to do is brighten it slightly because at the moment it kind of blends in with the rest of the pictures. So I'm going to keep a, a close eye, pardon the pun, on what I'm doing here. So I'm going to apply it to the other eye as well. So we're going to turn up the brightness just so it kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. So somewhere around 30. So we'll just see what that looks like if we apply it. And then if we go to the other eye and do the same. So this is what we have to match them up or else the model will look like she has two different color eyes. And we set the last one to 30. So we go to our brightness again. And I'm just going to type in 30 instead of clicking. And OK. So we can see now her eyes are jumping out a little bit. So there, it's a, there's an obvious color difference there now. So we could soften it there. We could blur the edges here if there was a kind of an overlap of colors. But I think we're OK. Um, the last thing we would probably do is we might adjust the color of the model's lips ever so slightly. So we might kind of um, make the color stronger. So we go up here to colors and saturate and we could just turn it up slightly just to make it a little the color a little bit richer. So that was 1.076 and I'm just going to do the same on the top part. So we just have to be careful what we select to go around the cupid's bow and down so we don't want to select the teeth as well because that's a different color and i'm just going back to the start and colors and saturation and we go up somewhere where was i the last time 1.076 wasn't it oh there it was okay and select all so we can see our colors are getting richer and the picture is getting much more even so just to familiar, familiarize ourselves with a few tools here, quite often you have to brighten the picture slightly. So if I go here to colors and back to our brightness and contrast, so a lot of pictures from cameras come out too dull. And if we just brighten this picture ever so slightly, it can improve it. Uh, particularly if the SLR settings aren't right on a camera, you might need to make up for it by adjusting the brightness in GIMP or Photoshop. Uh, contrast kind of creates a bigger difference between the pictures. I don't think we really need it here. I'm not a huge fan of contrast because we can see it can make things look kind of almost orangey a little bit. We'll turn it up ever so slightly just to see. We're probably used to this kind of filter from Instagram anyway. And one other tool that I would use quite a bit is curves. So I would generally set the curves line to an S. So up here, if we keep an eye on the spectrum of colors, this is the bright colors. So if I drag this to the left slightly, See, it brightens the bright colors. And then down here, I'll darken the dark colors ever so slightly. Now, I don't want to do too much of this at all because it can get very fake looking. So you're trying, it's nearly always an S like this. The bigger the S or the more severe the S, the more severe the colors. And one last tip would be if our picture was a little bit off in terms that it wasn't clear, we could sharpen it. So we could go up here to filters. And I think in this new version of GIMP, it's in enhance and there we are sharpen so if you know you don't want to sharpen much at all because you can already see it's starting to undo some of the work we did but if a picture is slightly soft or slightly blurred you can sharpen it slightly which can help fix it uh, if i undo that we can't see a huge difference but a tip i would give that if a picture is blurred and you're trying to salvage it we can um, make the foreground of the picture or the subject of the picture look better by blurring the background. So if we wanted to do it here, if this will pretend she's slightly blurred, I would go around the subject of the picture. So the model's head, so I'll just do it very quickly here. Now we should do loads of clicks here, so it's done uh, much more accurately. We could also select the background and invert it. That will give us the, the model. 
and we come down here and back over and back to the start, which is here someplace. Okay, and then what we do is we go up to blur. Actually, I just make sure I have the right. Um, I think I might have. I just need to invert that because that's going to blur the model. So we go up to select and invert. So it selects the background instead of the foreground. So what's behind the model. And then we go to blur and focus blur. And that's going to blur out the background for us. So there's apps now that will do this for us on phones. So we wouldn't use much of a blur. Enough to just make her stand out a little bit. And if I hit OK there, we can now see how much sharper she looks, even though she does, she's not sharper at all. We've just blurred the background. So we can see the difference there if we undo it. Just how she seems to jump out a little bit more off the page. So in that lesson, we've looked at quite a lot. We've looked at different ways to select. We've looked at inverting selections. We've looked at airbrushing layers, copying and duplicating layers, overlaying them under a soft light and uh, like we said, airbrushing, which is probably the most common of all the tools when it comes to editing pictures. So if I was to just save this and compare it against my original picture, and if I open up the original, we can now see the difference between them. So we, we might have thought as we were going through it that there wasn't a whole lot of uh, differences happening. But we can see there now that was the example I started off with. And the one we've just done there is probably better. There's our model. And here she is edited and looks younger. And the picture itself is more vibrant, much more even skin tone and uh, just a better overall picture. But the takeaway message is that when we see these pictures of people in media, we now know the process that these pictures have gone through and that people don't look like that at all. And we should keep that in mind when we see celebrities online and on Instagram, on whatever media we're looking at, that the vast majority of images are really heavily edited. And when you get into the habit of doing this, you can do it very quickly, but you can also learn how to spot things like where figures have been adjusted, where necks have been lengthened, where eyes have been enlarged. And a lot of pictures will go through that process. So like I said, it's as much as an image editing lesson as it is a life lesson. Okay, and that is all for this class.